Hello everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. And the purpose of our organization is to teach people how you can change the world. We want to give people an option and we want to demonstrate and provide an open source and free shared lifestyle choice that is sustainable, it's regenerative, it's self-sufficient, self uh, and it's self-replicating. We believe that it will duplicate itself because it will provide something that most people will consider so much more fulfilling than the current paradigm that uh, it will experience exponential growth. And so our job is to make that as easy as possible. And this is our weekly video blog uh, number 13 and our weekly update for the week of May 20th, 2013. So thanks as always for those who watch this, these videos and tune in to what we're doing. And as always, I will have a written blog that you can access through the YouTube description down below and, uh, and see images and things like that, things of that nature that relate to everything that we're creating. Um, so let's see, this last week, uh, Man, we got a lot going on. Once again, it's another week where there's not a lot of stuff that's happening in the forefront. Ah, oh, that's not true. You know, we so we completed our um, our highest good lifestyle considerations page, which is very exciting. Uh, the whole team worked on that, which was sitting down and brainstorming and all the things that we'll need to sort out on the property. It's all the elements of one community that can't really be sorted out right now because we don't necessarily have all the variables identified, um, and and that includes things like. Uh, cleaning supplies and certain sustainable materials and um, decision on highest good machinery and technology and things like that. And so we've created a page that's going to evolve into an open source global collaborative on some of these questions that we can't answer. If they're questions that we just don't have the ability to put, put the necessary research in to make a really good decision, we've created that as a portal. It'll, it'll evolve into a portal where people will be able to globally collaborate on answering these problems and we'll be able to test them and research and develop them even further on the one community property. And so that page is up and it's got a list of all the different areas, like I said, that we are, that we're looking at. Everything from highest good materials to highest good tools to highest good machinery, electronics, um, food that we can't buy, all these different things that we've looked at that we've said, okay, we really can't make the decision on these right now, but we're definitely going to need to think about it within the first 90 days and, and assess all of the variables that apply to that. Everything from um, local availability of, of the resources based on the decision that we make and what the carbon footprint would be for that. Uh, obviously, the consciousness and conscientiousness of the, the social conscientiousness of the, or the company itself, uh, the durability of the product, functionality of the product, etc. It's it's a really big deal and things it's it's um, fascinating to us because it, we feel that it's something that a lot of people that are really conscientious about their purchasing decisions are thinking about right now uh, but we want to create a whole village that's thinking about these we want to create an entire group of people that will grow into hundreds that will be problem solving on these ideas and putting our brains to exactly what is the best option available and then motivate the industries to address those kinds of issues more effectively and more aggressively because we're taking that research and development, that real real raw and uh, as objective as possible data and putting it out there. And so we've created a list of three different criteria that we're going to, or three different categories that we're going to put everything into when we um, get on the property that falls into this category. Number one would be things that we need to make a decision on right now. Like, hey, this is something that we really need to think about. Let's put the necessary resources, however many people it takes, to do the research, to gather that data and bring it to the group and then make a decision on what is the highest good option right now. The second group would be things that we know that we're gonna make that decision on, but now is not the time to make the decision. Instead, we wanna start gathering data on our current lifestyle practices and usage of that equipment or usage of those materials or those disposables or whatever it is. How much does it cost? How much are we throwing away? What is the packaging associated with this? Um, those kinds of things. Gather the data right now knowing that in six months we'll form a, form a focus group or a year we'll form a focus group that will suddenly engage this issue and really get into the details necessary and, and take that, that data and compare it to the changes that we make as an organization as a group so that we can provide that objective data. And then the third group would be things that we just go, okay, 
man, we don't really we don't really have a solution for this right now. I mean, it's just the amount of research that would be required or it requires new technology that we're not aware of exists. We've done some basic research and we just, we're just not able at this time with everything that we're building and everything that we're open sourcing and all the other things that we feel are really time sensitive. This is something that might, these are the items that might, you know, really not be on our plate for a decision making process for another year or two or six months or whatever it is. And so let's put those, let's create the infrastructure to engage to engage other people, the global sustainability movement and sustainability minded people and participating with us and coming up with those solutions. And so um, by sorting everything into those three categories, then we'll be able to address all of these in the most efficient and highest good way possible. And so um, it comes back to that question, like how, how can you help the world our goal is to give people as many options as possible. Uh, everything from super crazy in depth. Let's build a sustainable city with all of its infrastructure and education and social architecture and recreation. All these details down to hey, you know, I just like to participate on the internet. I like the idea of, of supporting through you know your internet viral group to to pick some key sustainability areas to really draw attention to, which is something that we've been running for a long time. And um, and so that that page is done. And it's uh, it's really cool. It's going to continue to evolve for a long time. It's um, it's a piece of our highest good for all uh, creating and living philosophy and uh, linked to from that page. And so we're excited to have that finished. Um, other things that we're doing right now. Uh, last week I reported in that there was some really exciting movement on our uh, on the property. Our funder came in with an offer that is just amazing seller financing. And so we're in the process of continuing to totally rework and um, redesign and, and basically do an overhaul on our three investor pages, the investor overview page, the invest, uh, the why this property page that really gives details about why we chose that property after, um, uh, after two years of searching and over 30 different criteria that we were looking for in property selection and a whole bunch of others that became apparent in the process of searching for the property. And then um, our investor options page, which shows uh, what we're really looking for, it goes really in depth into exactly what it is that we're seeking right now. And so we've started the overhaul on those pages and um, put a bunch of time and energy into it. We've got a lot more work to do on those pages to make them even better. And we're gonna finish that up this week, hopefully today. And um, so I'll include links to all that in the written blog if you're interested in taking a look at those. And of course, if you know somebody that um, believes in what it is that we're doing, wants to see um, a resource-based economy come to light, really is asking that question, how can I help the world? How can I, how can I make truly transformational change? Not just a band-aid on the current situation, but to truly create a new paradigm of, of what's possible and teach and share that with other people so that it will duplicate exponentially and spread these ideas, creating teacher demonstration villages all over the world to further create more teacher demonstration villages all over the world. And you know the idea is to to get these to get the resources in the hands of the people that need the most to um, to put the energy and the money of the people that really want this most for themselves and their families uh, into into these types of projects and get these set up all over the world. And so if you're somebody that knows uh, knows someone that could possibly help finance us, help help put forward the money to get that property off the market. Uh, so that we can share the location, we can share all the details and videos and those kinds of things. It would it would be hugely helpful. And so we're we're revamping the pages associated to that, and uh, we invite people to take a look at those, share those with anybody that you know that that might be able to help out. And um, you know, when the time is right, we we know that we'll nail it down. Uh, in addition to that. We're still working on the planting and harvesting page for the tropical atrium, uh, which will be a one hell of a complete um, uh, open source piece, a project launch blueprinted piece when it's done. We actually had all the research, or we thought all the research was done on this, and uh, we put the page up, and then we went through and we started looking at it as, as a tutorial, saying, okay, if this is going to be a tutorial for people, how will people interact with this? Is it going to serve the needs of somebody looking at it going, oh yeah, I understand that. I, I want to build that. And this is, this is what I need to do that. And we realized that the research that we've done, it just wasn't formatted in, in a way that was really user friendly. And so, man, we've spent the last month, we've got five people counting myself. Yeah, five people counting myself working on this piece of the project. 
And so where we're at with that now is we have um, we've finished the formatting for all the descriptions, the rewrites, or we've reformatted all the descriptions. We're in the process of rewriting them. We've rewritten about half of them. We've done the research on the placement and all that is done, where everything's going to be done. We've done the research on the purchasing order and exactly how much it'll cost for everything that's going to be grown in the tropical atrium. So that piece is done. Uh, and now we're in the process of reformatting that on the actual website and making it really clean so that there's a, a short description of, of like a five-line description and a picture of each plant or tree and what exactly, and a little description of exactly what that is with some fun facts about it. And then underneath that, there's a placement guide on why we chose to place every single plant where we did within the tropical atrium based on height and sun availability because there's going to be a whole bunch of microclimates within that environment. And then the third piece is um, uh, more information like special considerations in relation to each plant. And so we're going through the process of taking all this huge amount of information that we gathered and breaking it down into simple bullet points for everybody. So you can look at that and go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's really easy to understand. And then behind that, where there's going to be two additional layers that we will eventually build out on that as well that will go into extensive detail on some of these plants. Because some of the things that we're, there's just the, the information that we want really isn't out there. And then uh, uh, in addition, we've added, uh, you know, Wikipedia links to, to all of the plants. And so that is done. We got that completed this week. If you go to the page, you'll see that there's a Wikipedia link for every single plant. And that process is one of the things that's made us really realize that, man, the information that we need for these plants is just, it's just not there. Like Wikipedia doesn't have the information. There aren't, in some cases, there aren't really quality websites that just have everything that we want. And so we're getting this basic front, front facing page, this first portal page done, and then what we'll do is we'll have our, um, our botanists and horticulturalists go through and start um, adding in additional information behind the scenes to that to make it even more comprehensive and thorough and awesome. And so um, that's where we're at. Once again, I'm hoping to finish it up this week. All this stuff just takes a ton of time, um, you know, even with, with four or five people working on it, it's still, it's just it's a big task, but man, the end result is going to be really, really something beautiful and awesome. So working on that, uh, we've also got, let's see, the team on the Seiko Center City Hub. We're continuing to move forward on 3D. Um, we got all of our uh, laundry facility details this last week completed. Um, Jen with loveyourhottub.com got those for us. And unfortunately, um, the, or the group, the company that she was able to go through to get that for us, um, really has a proprietary information disclaimer and copyright disclaimer on their emails. And so what we're waiting on now is a release, a waiver from that. Otherwise, we can't open source those details. And if we can't open source those details, then they're, they're, not, they're not even useful to us. And so there were a couple changes that we wanted to make in, every, in all the work that was done, which is amazing. It's the, it's the level of detail that's necessary with the fitting sizes and exactly what the washers and dryers are and you know, how many loads of laundry we'll be able to do a day and all these types of details, a really sustainable option using ozone. Um, but we need a release on, uh, on that proprietary information um, disclaimer at the bottom of everything that they produce or we can't open source share it. And since we're all about giving people options on how they can help the world and, and make a difference and open source and free sharing everything that we do, uh, without that release and that waiver, we need to start from scratch on that because it's not, it's not usable information. So, but it's exciting to have, have that done <laughs> if we can use it. So that's complete. Um, 3D continues to move forward. We've got, uh, working on the Sego Center right now, we have a team of six plus, uh, yeah, a team, team of six working on the Sego Center, including P2S Engineering, who sent us all their recommendations. And we're going to set up a time this week to go over their recommendations as far as insulation and all those details to get us to platinum, uh, lead platinum certification on the Sego Center City Hub. So that's coming along really well. Uh, also in food infrastructure, we have uh, three people really working on, four people who are really, five people that are really involved in the aquaponics and aquapini wallapini design and um, and uh, Charles said that he's got the first generation 3D done on aquaponics uh, large-scale aquapini uh, food production facility and I was hoping to share that today but I haven't gotten the rendering from him 
on that yet. So if that comes in today before I publish the blog, I'll put it up. Otherwise, that will come out probably, I would expect, next week. And so that's exciting. And then um, we've got all the planting details and everything done for that, for those structures as well. So the Wallapini, the Zen Aquapini, the Aquapinis. Uh, so there's one large scale Aquapini. There's two large, uh, there's one large scale Wallapini. There's um, two small Wallapinis that will be tree Wallapinis. And then there is two Zen Aquapinis that will be more of an aesthetic design. And the planting for all of that stuff is done. And so this is another reason why we're putting so much detail and so much effort into the Tropical Atrium Planting and Harvesting Guide because um, it, it, that's the format that we're going to use for all of the other ones to make it simple and, and um, easily duplicable and easily modifiable so that people understand why we planted, what we planted, where we planted because of the microclimate that's, that's created in that environment specifically in the areas of that structure so that people want to change that, then they can go, oh, okay, this is the microclimate using the expertise of the people on our team that have designed all this who are truly, truly experts at this stuff. So you can take that information. People without that expertise can then make modifications. And then as a global collaborative, we can feed that information into a central database and show people like, hey, you can grow all of these things in this microclimate. They will do really, really well in these structures. And you can grow all of these things in this microclimate. And they do really well. And so creating that global collaborative, anybody that wants to participate for the highest good of all of humanity in the process of building this stuff and um, sharing their, their research and development and combining it with our research and development so we can make the whole thing better and better and better over time. And that way, um, you know, we're, we're starting to create this, this idea that is talked about uh, by the Venus Project and some of these amazing forward-thinking futurist organizations. They're talking about creating a global, global utopia um, and and uh, our feeling is is that we need a stepping stone to get there. And so when we start talking about an open source and free shared database of an information hub that anybody can plug into and contribute, that's what we've created. And so the infrastructure and everything that we're putting in place right now is all about that. So that's what's going on with that. Um, on the Earthbag Village, we've also got uh, two members of our team, myself and one other member of our team working on that. And... Uh, Four, four consultants outside of our team that are putting in energy into that as well. Uh, 3D is coming along with that. We're, we've stopped focusing on the tropical atrium. We feel like we've made enough progress there that now we're working on the individual domes and putting all of that into CAD. And then we'll have a SketchUp version of that as well so we can have 3D of the whole village and start playing with some of the elements on that um, that, that uh, can only be played with once it's in 3D. We're working on the plumbing as well with that. Last week we put up the plumbing outline and so um, now we're going to the next level with all of that as well. And, um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else on infrastructure. That's the main thing. Earthbag Village, the um, food infrastructure, and the Sago Center City Hub. Those are, those are the primary areas that we're focusing on there. And then um, the Education for Life program is also moving forward. So um, visible stuff we've completed or, or gotten, we've gotten the, the, the hub together for the uh, review, assessment, and evolution component for the whole Education for Life program. That hub is up. Three of the breakout pages on that hub are also up, which is the assessment breakout page, um, the forms breakout page, although we need to populate that with the actual forms that have been created. And so there's some formatting and things that needs to happen with that. But the, the infrastructure for that is starting to come along. And um, the Education for Life program is another one. We have three people working on that, plus myself. So um, four people that are really putting a lot of energy into that. And, um, and so we've completed all the curriculum pieces are now done. They just need to be put up on the website. We've com completed all of the strategy pages are done and up on the website. And um, now we're really putting our energy into strategies of amazing communicators, leaders, and teachers and um, refining, just going through and double checking all of our work on everything that's been done, reviewing the knowledge and wisdom component that was just finished, the family and community component uh, of curriculum that was just finished, and um, just reviewing all those curriculum components, making sure that they're complete before we put them up on the website, and, uh, and then working on all that evaluation assessment aspect. And then as soon as all that's done, we'll start engaging the process of um, strategies for teaching different things, which we have a hugely populated page for that. We want to finish that out and have probably another 20 different strategies that can be used for teaching virtually anything. 
And so the whole Education for Life program that's coming together, now that we've got curriculum done, now that we've got the strategies of, of uh, amazing existing teaching philosophies all assessed and, and drawn out and overviewed, and, and now we've taken all those pieces and propagated them across the whole website, when we're done, we'll take the strategies of great teachers, leaders, and communicators, and you'll use those strategies and plug them into the curriculum components combined with teaching or learning tools and toys component with the teaching strategies component and that will create a tool for endless lesson plans and so it's kind of an A plus B plus C plus D equals E and E is the lesson plans and then we'll create the first six months of lesson plans for the property and we'll combine that with um, We'll combine that with the ultimate classroom, put the whole thing together in one big bundle of awesomeness that will be an open source and free shared uh, information hub. Anybody can take that information, use it, or use the tools that we already have right now for grabbing that information and, uh, and adding to it or suggesting uh, additions or modifications to it and things like that. And we'll take the best of what everybody has to contribute on that, continue to evolve it online, and, uh, and there you have it. And so the Google Docs and things like that, if people want to plug into that and take a look at what we're doing behind the scenes, you can actually do that. Right now, uh, those links are on the pages, and you can go and explore what's happening behind the scenes, make comments if you want to add to it, and those kinds of things. So that's my update. Um, let me think if I missed anything. I don't think so. I think that's it. You know, we've got a couple of interviews and things that we're doing behind the scenes as well, possibly adding a new member to the team. Um, as well as uh, a new partner that we'd like to announce this week, and so we're excited about that. Just waiting for them to get back to us with the final details so we can put their bio up, so hopefully we'll have that announcement next week. And other than that, I'm complete. So uh, back to the original question, how can you help the world? Get involved. Take what we're doing and use it uh, in your own way. Evolve it take it in a different direction, build on top of it. That's the whole project launch blueprinting model. The idea is to give uh, blueprints and foundational <clears throat> structure pieces that people can use to start their own projects or get involved in our project. Uh, consider getting involved. You know, We have a team of about 50 people that are participating at various levels from huge daily contributions in the case of team members and even some of our partners to more of just a consulting role where we go to them for questions and, and help with things we have a specific question and they can uh, deliver a specific answer uh, but the bottom line is, is there's our and people just participating just by sharing and liking our stuff and helping to spread the ideas so that other people will take these ideas and embrace them and, and start you know continuing to forward this movement which is definitely it is it is moving and so um, you know for people that are really interested in making a difference, uh, we're, we're big believers in be the change that you wish to see in the world, as Gandhi said. And um, I believe it was Gandhi that said that. Might not have been Gandhi that said be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Anyway, we believe in be the change that you want to see in the world, and, uh, and we're trying to create as many options as possible for people who would like to participate in that. And so uh, take a look at our project. Take a look at other sustainability projects that are out there. Get involved. Um, uh, you know, do whatever feels right to you and, and participate every little bit makes, makes a difference. You know, a million people making a little bit of a difference is a world changing movement. And so, um, that's what we're, that's what we're focused on is giving, giving people more and more options to do that. And so with that, I'll wrap up. This has become a very long blog and, uh, and I try to keep these short failed this time. So thanks. If you listen to the whole thing, uh, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, like our videos and uh, and help share our stuff if you can and uh, as always thank you from the bottom of our hearts one community appreciates every single one of you for all the support they give us uh, namaste and have a beautiful day